I work in nutrition, and it's a very interesting time to work in nutrition because people are constantly talking about what they eat. They take pictures of what they eat, they use works to describe what they eat that have not been invented 10 years ago, and the internet gives rise to people sharing their advice on what you should and shouldn't eat. And some of that advice is ridiculous, some of that advice is more or less common sense, and some of that advice is outright dangerous. And this is where I come in. As a nutritionist, I take a very close look at what we eat and how that affects our health. And we are particularly interested in sugar. And sugar is something that we all evolved to love. And we love it so much that we call those most dear to us sugar, honey, sweetheart. And although all those things are positive, we know that eating too much sugar is not good for us. And, oh God. <laughs> And there are two theories out in the field on how sugar affects our health. And the first one is an easy, um, an easy theory. It doesn't matter. You can eat whatever you want. As long as you balance what's coming in with the energy going out, eat whatever you want. And there are very suspicious and prominent names out in the field that perpetuate this idea. However, it is a very simple solution to a very complex problem. And to understand the complexity that comes within sugar, we have to look to sugar it's, uh, at sugar it, itself. It's a molecule that consists of two distinct molecules, and one of it is glucose, the other is fructose. And we find glucose in everything that's starchy, that's bread, potatoes, rice. And we also find it in fruit, and in fruit it is accompanied by fructose. And if that would be the only fructose we saw in our diets, then I could stop here, we could have drinks, everybody, uh, everything would be fine. But most of the fruct uh, fructose we see comes from sugar, from re refined sources, and that is crystalline sugar, or that is high fructose corn syrup. And glucose and fructose are very similar. They have exactly the same amount of calories. They have exactly the same atoms. However, those atoms are arranged a bit differently, and that's already for, uh, for our body to tr uh, enough for our body to treat them differently. And we're going to look at how starting with glucose. So when we eat glucose, it's absorbed through our intestines, is then transported into the liver. And the liver has an enzyme that takes care of the glucose that has two settings. And those settings are dependent on the inner battery of the liver. If that battery is empty, the enzyme's gonna be turned on, it's gonna pull in all the glucose coming into the liver, burning it up as fuel, and then recharging that inner battery. And if that battery is full, the enzyme's gonna be turned off, all the glucose that uh, comes into the liver is gonna be transported into the body and is accessible to the brain, the muscles, and if they don't want it, fat will always take it. And, and the difference with fruct uh, fructose is there is a different enzyme taking care of that fructose, and that enzyme has only one setting. It's always on, and it's gonna use all the fructose, burning it up as fuel, and if the liver does not need that energy because the battery is full, it's not going to waste it. It's going to store it and it, uh, how our body stores uh, energies in the form of fat. And the difference between the fat that our liver produces, it's not tucked away safely in your hips, arms, and legs. It is um, transported into your blood and it's going to make the fluids in your blood look like milk. And the problem with that is if that is a constant situation, that fat can end up in your arteries, and if those are arteries around your heart or in your brain, you're gonna end up with nasty things like a heart attack. And actually, half of everybody who's living on Earth right now, if climate change doesn't kill us, will die of a heart attack or a stroke. And uh, uh, what we do in our lab is we do clinical research trials. So because we love sugar, we really wanted to find out how much can we eat and how much is safe. But unfortunately, we found that already one and a half cans of soda are enough each day um, to increase your risk of developing a heart attack. So what do we do about this? We could just stop drinking those drinks. But it's not that easy because when we look into our stores, 74% of everything that's sold there contains sugar. And that sugar might come in different names. So you might think you eat a diet low in sugar, but if you eat processed foods, you very likely are not. And if you live in an environment that only gives you bad options, 
the problem's not you, the problem is that environment. So what we try to do is to come up with uh, research and come up with data to inform all of you, but also to inform government and to inform industry to change the products and to change the rules and to change the environment. So eventually, it is my sincere hope that, when, uh, that if government officials need information, they come to us scientists and not uh, go to companies that um, might be a problem in the whole system. So I hope I've given you enough information for later uh, for the reception to make good choices on your beverages then <laughs> cheers